Hi everyone, welcome back to part 9 of the Trumpeter German Panzer IV tank build. It's Ted here from eModels. Um, uh, normally I uh, would go on and say what we're going to look forward to in this video, but it seems that we've got to the stage now where things are progressing so fast that um, I don't really know where we'll uh, be at the end of this video, so we'll go on a bit of an adventure and see where we get to. Um, but however, one of the first things that we're going to do, we're going to look at putting this turret floor uh, into the turret itself. Um, but before we do that, um, we've got it all built and I thought I would recap a little bit just to show you how we uh, went about weathering if you didn't follow it right through from the start. It's just a matter of uh, doing the same weathering techniques as we've done on the rest of the interior, uh, which is really quite a simple process. Um, if you come in and have a look at the uh, the turret floor, uh, let's get it back into focus, there we go. Um, you can see what we've done here. I've gone ahead and covered um, the top of it in a bit of weathering and some of the supports. Um, and you can see probably see in the colour difference between the floor itself and the base of the turret. Um, it's just really a, a really simple technique to do. Um, there's a number of ways that you can do it um, and we'll have a look at those now. So let me go and get some other stuff together. Um, so what, what do we need to do this? Right, well we uh, need a paintbrush. Let's find a nice detail brush. Uh, I use the Citadel um, the sort of fantasy wargaming type brushes, I find them really good really. Um, there's a detail brush, uh, that's the, for, your, for those of you that use them, it's the yellow end. Um, what else do we need? We need some black paint, um, the Valero black paint, any acrylic paints will do. Uh, that's for stage one. Um, Let's have a look in my draw of weathering products. Uh, we can use the UMP Dark Dirt. Uh, we can also use some uh, Abtalung 502 uh, engine grease. Uh, and a little bit if you wanted, some of the Fantasy um, Starship Filth. The up to long 502 that. Now this stuff is getting pretty rare. I think my friend uh, Fox Wolf has gone and bought it all. Uh, but if you can find any of this online or anywhere else, go and grab a tube. It'll last you forever. Uh, unless you like Fox and you weren't using it all the time. But it'll last ages and it's a really good useful colour. Um, and also we could use some weathering powders uh, let's get it in there, the Humbrol weathering powders in black. Uh, or you could use some washes as an alternate to the uh, the, the UMP stuff. You can use the Humbrol or the uh, MIG or um, anything really. Uh, the AK Interactive stuff. Uh, but I think I'll put that one back and we'll stick with these for now. Right, the chipping. Um, you can see on here what we've done is used some, uh, find a pointy stick, is use some black paint just for chipping around all the high traffic areas. Um, the turret floor itself is going to be quite a busy area um, with lots of things and heavy equipment moving around. Uh, the shells, um, the rounds will be moved around, they'll be loaded in and out of the tank, uh, loaded into the breech, fired off, um, which is going to create quite a, 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 a harsh working environment. So the um, the chipping um, and the usage uh, is going to be, well not substantial, but it's going to be there. Um, and also darken it down because when these shells are getting fired off, um, it's going to create quite a bit of cordite. Uh, which is a, a black oil, which leaves a black oily type residue. 
uh, over everything and you can never get rid of it. You've probably seen these pictures of tankers after they've uh, been uh, in action, um, sitting, having a drink, uh, just relaxing or chilling by the tank, how filthy they looked. Um, and if they're getting that filthy, the rest of your tank is going to as well. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to add some of this chipping. Now, if I can find my pallet, as you know, I use my little tea tray. And into that, I use uh, a little bit of... Um, plastic just to uh, put the paint onto. Some of you might use these little colour cups, if it will find any. Some of the little colour cups you could use them. Uh, bottle tops, I haven't got any to hand at the moment, but bottle tops, uh, milk bottle tops, anything just to uh, to drop your, your, your paint into. Uh, right, so give our paint bit of a shake sorry I'm just shaking paint off camera at the moment I'm not doing anything else here we go all we need just a touch just a touch in there and using our fine tipped brush is just take a bit of doesn't need to be diluted or anything just uh, neat paint and just have a look and give everything some chips. Now what we're going to do um, is look at the areas where there's going to be most likely to be chips which is corners, edges, um, places that uh, would receive some normal wear and tear. Uh, we've still got this magazine to fit in here. Oops, not too. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Still got this magazine to fit in there, so obviously um, parts around that and we can leave clear just to let let us glue it in. So that will go in there, but we'll move that out of the way for now. So just take some light, just to take a coat of paint on your brush and just touch. Um, it really just where it takes your fancy. Just begin with small chips just dots don't paint the big ones because what you'll do if as you find is as you put more dots in the scratch the tear or the abrasion becomes more don't try and do a big chip do a series of small ones and join them all together and it's really just a matter of taking your time now you're going to look at where people will rub the boots ammunition will get knocked around and here is the um, it'll be the gunner's seat we can be begin by thinking where his arms are going to rest, where the paint's going to rub and chip. Usually in corners, because you'll find that if you spray, if in real life you're spraying something, the paint is going to wear off in the corners and on the edges because it'll chip. If once it starts to chip, it'll continue chipping. Now it may not look much. We're just using um, what we're using um, the matte black. This is uh, seventy nine fifty, which is the matte black. It's not gloss. It doesn't look much when you're painting and you're applying it. Once it dries, it does become. A chip. Now a lot of people will think of doing chipping um, with the, some old sponges or anything like that but I think that for the inside of a tank or for the inside of this model anyway um, could be a bit a little bit too much 
because we can apply, leave it, let it dry and then come back to it and do some more. Now this junction box down here uh, we can just apply it to some edges as a, a sign on the front can you quite see it there's a, there's a little of it looks like a notice on the front of this junction box um, I'm not sure what color that would be but I think I'm gonna just find later on it's just a touch of red paint just to bring it out and puts a little bit of color just to uh, give a break up the monotony of the the black and the white inside here now then this junction box it just shows the cables all cut off but if you were wanting to go that extra mile um, I'm sure that some copper cable um, you could add cab uh, add detail extra detail to this tank uh, can you see what how we're just going around the edges just dragging your brush just across them and we can continue building that until you're really happy with it and then these seats here on these posts they are adjustable uh, they're adjustable for height so I would think that with the going up and uppy and downy they're going to create some scratches on the supports scratch the paint off so we can apply some chips scratches just to continue if you're doing scratches just tip of your brush and just just drag it down just be random with it and it will look uh, a lot more natural don't try I'm not really trying to recreate anything I'm just sort of letting the natural shake of my hand and the brush do the work now as you know uh, from watching my videos I always say less is more now you see I, I'm not particularly doing the turret floor itself the, this bit here I'm not doing that with any chips because that will receive a different wear pattern it's gonna be more of a ground in dirt yeah the paints gonna rub off um, but we can recreate that by adding some dirt and toning the whole paint scheme right down Now I have seen in some of these uh, pictures online and on the web that some of the tanks are painted different inside whereas the commander's seat here at the back I've seen that painted black um, I've seen these floor supports painted black as well but this is in keeping with what we've done throughout the rest of the build and the rest of the interior of this tank anyway I go and finish this chipping and then we'll come back in a moment and we'll do the next stage of the weathering when these chips have dried okay see you in a moment okay then well I've uh, let the um, the chips dry and moved on a little bit so we can start and tie it all together now 
in the uh, in the next phase. Um, I've started on the uh, turret deck itself, uh, and I've gone over that with um, a wash of uh, UMP uh, dark dirt. Uh, it's simple enough. Uh, just decant it into a container, then using a wash brush, just give it a whole wash all over, and then uh, let it dry. Uh, we've already I've done that, so rather than giving it a wash, going away again and coming back I've uh, done the first part and now for the next bit you're going to need a lot of uh, cotton buds q-tips wherever you be in the world uh, whatever you want to call them and just a drop of water um, if we put this back on here you can maybe see it a little better you can see the contrast in the white background and it keeps my work mat a little bit cleaner um, this stuff will rub off on its own. See how the the cotton buds picking it up. Uh, but just to dampen that cotton bud just a little bit, and then you can start and work the the cleaner and take off all the excess. Can you see this happening? What you'll find. Um, normally you would do this um, on a gloss surface, you would uh, give it a coat of clear gloss varnish first and then work it all off. But uh, the paint that we use, the uh, Mr Hobby Off-White, is actually a gloss paint. Uh, so it's giving it uh, a little bit of an area, uh, an extra... Oh, I forgot what I was going to say then. Anyway, what what you'll find is that as you're rubbing it off, it will leave the the paint sort of ingrained with the dirt, and you can brush it uh, as you want. You can take it all off. Uh, you can leave streaks on. Think about the areas as well where the floor would get dirty and probably stay dirty where the the dirt would get ingrained in the corners you're going to need a lot of cotton buds uh, when it really gets choked up just get another one and give it a go again yeah so where you think the the uh, the dirt would get ingrained and build up along the edges See if, if I find my little pointy stick. Come in a little bit more. We'll see if I can show you. Is it going to stay in focus for us? See in here how we'll leave a build up of muck along there. Uh, these guys, I don't think, will have been house proud, but I don't think they'll be house proud enough to uh, go around with. Uh, the polishing cloth just to clean everything out so the muck will be ingrained it will be hidden in the corners and as you can see as we take it off it cleans it all up but it still leaves that lifting look Q-tip, uh, cotton bud. And as well, the foot traffic will grind in the dirt, but also there wouldn't be, I wouldn't think there'd be clumps of mud lying around like the outside of the tank. Unless you had a particularly fussy commander who uh, enforced everybody take the boots off on entering the vehicle please uh, OCD tank commander and we could leave this in a pristine condition as it left the factory as he made all of his team wear slippers 
there we can see that see how it's all tying all the chips together uh, and giving it a sort of uh, is the right word patina as it colors it down it doesn't take all the dirt off as we're rubbing it it just oh, and I've knocked my clear my weathering mixture over there so that's the tank floor done once it dries off again I'll see if it needs any more removing I think that's pretty good um, we'll just do the rest of it if I find my wash brush put that in there find my wash brush take some of this uh, UMP weathering wash that I've just spilled over a bench waste not want not and it's just a matter of applying that coat that's all there is to it simple no effort it's pretty good stuff this UMP it does do as it says on the tin there's varying shades of it as you don't already know I have mentioned before available from e-models and don't forget as well uh, if you uh, are following this build on YouTube um, I always like to mention if you want to see sort of uh, the behind the screw the behind the scenes uh, build as it goes on this and all my other builds just follow skipper scale models on Facebook if you've got Facebook or have a look at friends if you haven't and I post on there some general day-to-day -day rubbish and how the build is coming along and it gives you a chance if you don't comment on the video uh, on the video itself on YouTube it gives you the chance if you want you can send me a line on there uh, send me some feedback what you think um, what you'd like to see how you'd like to see things done always open to suggestions uh, and at the moment I'm already thinking of what to build next what would you like to see built next one or two things in mind uh, if there's something particular that you want and it takes my interest as well we could uh, certainly consider it right, I'm just building up all the weathering on the bits that I haven't done I've worked on the tank on the turret floor just doing exactly the same on all the other bits and dulling them down grubbing grubbying them up and tying it all together uh, and then once I've cleaned them up uh, I think I might do a little bit more work just on that um, seat uh, the loaders the gunners seat there this bit of work machinery here is all his turret controls um, there's this switch on the top for making his turret transverse and also here should this lock break down or the electrics go there'll be the hand crank as well to make the turret go around in the turret ring itself uh, can, we, can we come a bit closer without it going out of focus in the turret ring itself you probably see in there um, pointy stick time probably see in there that what we've done are uh, the turret teeth the teeth in the gears now that's where we've gone along with our um, up to long engine grease that I showed you before this stuff <laughs> yeah. come back into focus let's try to focus on two different things uh, we've put a, a layer of that in uh, and rubbed it all in using uh, once again some cotton buds rubbed it all in and then just dry brushed 
dry brushed along the teeth itself with some metallic if it stays in focus and doesn't try to focus on the those bits there we go again oh, it's, it's not, uh, we've zoomed in too much there we are you can see that and it gives it that effect of the uh, sort of um, oily sort of lubrication for the turret teeth trying to uh, give it a smooth a run around on the transverse anyway right that's just about all that done for the interior uh, and now if we zoom out you can see it's, it's not your eyes honestly it's it's me there we go so we'll let that all go off I think we've tied that all together just really as simple as that and then we'll look at getting this into that over there which is the turret so take another break and see you in a moment okay then that's everything done now um, the turret floors um, finished and weathered uh, as much as I'm happy with um, you could carry on do lots more to it if you wanted to uh, and now's the time to uh, fit this turret floor into the turret itself um, I think this part is really sort of the last stage of the inside uh, parts to build on the tank uh, it's just a few points to uh, point out to you when I've tried it before and done a, uh, a prefit is that because of the we, as we found in the uh, the rest of the build the tolerances are quite um, tight in uh, getting some of the parts together um, and you need, really need to clean across the front of the the turret ring uh, cleaning the paint off in there uh, top and bottom on the underside on the underside you find there's a little locating uh, ridge along there you can clean the paint off back to the bare plastic under there and also in the turret itself if we can fetch the turret in just <coughs> in here uh, just along the front of the turret mantle there's uh, a slot where the turret floor fits uh, clean the paint off in there as well uh, that way it will slot together a lot easier um, as we found as I say we found right through this tank that some of the tolerances uh, for fitting parts are quite tight anyway there's the turret done I've done a little one or two little things whilst I've been waiting for the uh, the turret floor to dry and we'll, we'll just discuss them briefly in a moment but uh, we really want to get this um, floor into this turret now um, so it's just a matter of uh, getting it nice and secured in there now it fits in one way uh, hopefully you can see this going in uh, and you just really got to be careful that you're not pressing on anything on any of the parts that you're going to snap off and have them all done now that sits in there and then it fits back if we can take that out again I forgot to show you it fits back onto two locating lugs just here in the back of the turret one there and one on the other side just in there <coughs> uh, so what we need to do is put the front in first just trying to keep it in short so you can see as I say if you clean the paint off it will go in it's just a matter of finding the right way in and then you want to make sure that these gaps are as tight as you can get them these ta these gaps around here are as tight as you can get and it should sit in there pushing it forward and pulling it in uh, I think a little clamp might come in handy we'll just try it if we get a little clamp just to hold the front in because then when we press down on the back here to fit it onto those lugs the gaps at the front here are going to close up so we can get some 
glue in the front first. I think what we'll do, we'll glue the front, <coughs> we'll glue the front in, and then we'll concentrate when this glue's gone off. We can concentrate along the back end and pulling it all down. Just a couple of little clamps just to hold the back end in. I'll see if it works that way. Touch of to be a extra thin just to run into the gap. <coughs> And just holding that in there. <coughs> I think if we take some of the bigger clamps, <coughs> we may. Because we want to, we don't want to really tr be trying and filling gaps around these areas with filler. Oh, I think that there's a round fill out of the magazine. Try one of the bigger clamps. We're just really trying to close up the gaps to save ourselves some work. And filling them. There's not enough tension on that one. The tension on these um, clamps can be altered as you can see by uh, elastic bands. If you get hold of them they're ideal uh, pieces of kit. Let's knock that one off the other side. You really try to be very gentle with it because there's lots of parts on here. And excuse, and excuse me if you can't see everything just because my hands are getting in the way. But I'm trying to uh, get this all done so you can see it properly. There's lots of small parts that we don't want to be knocking off with our hands at this stage. Okay, so this is a quite a quick scene. So what we'll do now, I'm just going to go off and let this glue dry. We'll come back, we'll take all the clamps off and we'll uh, have a look at putting it in the tank and making it look like a tank. So just be a few moments while the glue sets and everything dries up. Uh, I'll glue along this back end as well, uh, get it all settled down and then we'll put it in the tank. See you in a minute. Okay then welcome back, um, that's the glue all set on the turret bottom now and um, we can take these clamps off. Um, since I glued the front part in I had gone ahead and glued the rear of the turret in as well. Um, put some clamps just to hold it all in place. And now we can look at uh, putting it into the tank for the first time. Um, just before we do that, um, just worth pointing out that should you want to um, play with your tank or whatever, um, the turret base is a little bit fragile and it will slightly move on its base. I don't know if you can uh, work out. It's, it's, it's secure but there is just a touch of movement in there. Now that means that, if we could just put that to one side and we'll bring the, uh, the tank in. <coughs> That means that if you um, have any friction or anything just inside uh, the turret on that uh, bobbin there um, or any 
catching around the edges of the turret floor. Uh, let's move this around so we can see inside here. If you, could, if you have any movement uh, catching around the turret floor here, uh, it's just going to put a little bit of extra strain just on that turret floor, which um, which may cause it to break or whatever. Uh, what I've done as well, I've just made sure everything was all clean and inside and everything was smooth and it was free play. Then I just put a touch of silicon grease or Vaseline just inside where it contacts with the bobbing in here. Now everything here should just finding the right place, finding the locate in and just drop in. There we go. Let's have a zoom out so you can see it. <coughs> you see I've taken the wheels off now just because we're moving things around a little bit and rather than stop them all falling off. So that there is the turret. And just for the more perceptive among you, we'll notice that the turret is actually offset. Uh, it's not um, symmetrical to the hull. It's actually moved across to the looking at it from this way it's moved across to the left hand side um, I don't know why that is um, but I understand it does give the uh, the loader a little bit more room inside so you'll see here the um, the beading that goes around the front of the turret is on the hull there but it's missing there uh, so the hull uh, the turret is actually offset on the hull uh, just to use a bit of useless information uh, so that's that bit done. <coughs> now then, what, we, what I've gone and done is gone ahead and simply built the, the turret bin. Um, and I won't be gluing that on just yet, but we can put it in position. There, like that. I've also put on some of the armour plates, uh, sort of uh, supporting brackets. Um, now remember... Before you put the turret ring on, there's a ring that goes around the cupola, uh, the commander's cupola. Uh, before you put that on, these um, support brackets need to go on first, otherwise they won't go through the little gap just underneath. Uh, that goes on there. And there's the bits for the commander's uh, cupola to go into there. And we'll go on ahead now and look at building these parts up so uh, that's that bit done that's the turret on the tank way hey fantastic it's uh, looking the bit we can start and work along the outside now uh, and we're just about done anyway let's go and have a look at these bits and we'll see you in a minute okay bye now okay then here we are here we're going to look at <coughs> Excuse me. Building the um, commander's cupola, 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 the commander's hatch. Um, <coughs> it begins with by two pieces um, from the same sprue. Part six. Uh, just checking them in the diagram. There's certainly a part six and a part nine. Uh, part six. Uh, these are off uh, the sprue Y. Part six has these little uh, attachment tabs at the bottom and part 9 doesn't. Uh, when you take them off the sprue uh, because they're part 6 and they're part 9 um, the numbers are actually turned around so you can't actually work them out which is which so just check on the instructions that you've got the right part because these uh, vision blocks, the outside of the vision blocks, uh, slide in to the lower section, which is this one, and don't put them in the wrong one, like I did, which is this one. Um, now then, the vision blocks go in there, uh, they glue in, and then I've decided to spray everything up um, before it all finally goes together. Um, now the uh, vision blocks on the inside, uh, these, they're just a couple of parts, um, to go together quite easily. I think there's one, two, three, four, f couple of, about six, half a dozen parts plus a clear vision block. Uh, Coming a bit closer and have a look. If we keep it in focus, there we go. 
Uh, they go in there. I've painted them all up, I've sprayed them all and I've done some weathering on them and these fit in here. Now the handles which I would take would come on, stay focus. The handles which I would assume would open and close the exterior of the vision blocks uh, go in the bottom. And to find the right position of them is to put the block the vision block in and the handle sits in between the two lugs that we looked at earlier. They go in there. So it's just a simple matter of building them all up, painting them and then putting them together. Uh, they don't need much glue. In fact I wouldn't have thought they w these parts would need any glue at all because they're all held in once the whole thing goes together. There, so we can get them in there. Once again as right the way through the kit the tolerance is of the fit are quite tight so just be careful about getting layers of paint um, on the mating surfaces. There we go and using our tw tweezers we can just adjust the handle to go in there like that. Right, the next part is to put the top on. Uh, there's a little locating lug just in here just so that it will goes the right way around on the base of the cupola or the, the commander's hatch and it clips together easily like that. Let's keep it in shot which way we go. Right the next part are these. These are little um, what I believe to be uh, cushions uh, just to protect uh, the commander when he's sort of in his hatch uh, and the vehicle is moving along and they remind me a little bit of something out of a video game they look like um, little nanos or whatever they're called anyway never mind now then there's two ways for these there's a top and a bottom uh, the top is the if you look at them when you come when you take them off the sprue there's two there's an up and a down the up part is the shorter of the set of locating lugs so they go in that way okay right now then the only thing that I find when I've been trying to dry fit these is that they don't fit um, the I've tried them all sorts of ways around and different ways of getting them in and out but the only way I can find to really make them fit because they fit in between the vision blocks just in here and there is uh, some locating holes just in each side of the vision block for them to fit but uh, they don't must be about the only part of this kit that doesn't fit now the only way I can make them find to make them fit is the shorter of the two steps uh, straps is to just gently bend them in just gently bend them to almost at a right angle to the cushion now you need to do it slowly otherwise you'll probably break them off which hopefully I won't do whilst we're on camera because it could be quite embarrassing. Now then, they are a fiddle to get them in and sit properly in here. I'm trying to keep it so you can see what we're doing but it's almost impossible to do. Uh, you just need to keep adjusting them until you find that it will sit in there and maybe just using a couple of uh, using the tweezers just there. it's gone in right okay 
it will it does go I've had them in patience is a virtue there they will fit in there like that then just a drop of glue and to hold them all together uh, and we'll do that right the way around there's five of them to go in uh, now that some of you may have seen that I've painted them well you will have seen that I've painted them white but some of you may think that they should be black um, I've seen lots of different uh, videos uh, a few tanks I've seen them black a few tanks I've seen them white um, at the moment I'm going to leave them in this white colour um, and maybe uh, just weather them up a little bit more these haven't been weathered the same as the chips for the rest of it um, although when I get it all together I might decide and paint them black just to give that little bit of difference in colour uh, to the inside and then edge them up as though they've been covered in a plastic leathery type uh, material um, so that will go there uh, the command the ring on the top with the hinges will go on next uh, it will only go one way around because the locating logs are positioned uh, so it will only fit one way that's that way just move these out of the way so I can see them uh, once again we have the problem of getting the hinges uh, a hinge to work so I think I'll be leaving this door open and then it all fits together let's slide the tank back in and let's zoom out so you can see what's happening slide the tank back in you can see that while I've been waiting for these other bits to dry I've gone and put the um, armor brackets on the side of the uh, the turret uh, but then this uh, once again as a locating lug to keep it at the back so you're getting everything the right way around and the turret the, ax the commander's uh, hatch will go in like that uh, there's a machine gun um, option to go on there um, so I'll build that up and put that on that's just a few um, pieces uh, just to glue together there's one or two photo etch parts which will just glue in there uh, and that really is going to be all about the outside of the tank done um, which is all we can do really for this video I think uh, because next time we're probably going to be in the situation where uh, after I've put a few more pieces on the tank um, some of the armor brackets and things like that oh, you can't see what's happening uh, once I've done some of the brackets on the armor for the rest of it uh, we'll be looking at painting so I think for the next video uh, we will start and get some paint on this beast uh, and start really bringing it all together uh, but anyway uh, I think I've taken up enough of your time uh, for this video uh, so it's Ted here at eModels and don't forget as well just go and have a look at my uh, page on Facebook if you're on Facebook at Ted's uh, at Skipper's Scale Models uh, and also um, eModels are there as well or at e eModels .co.uk uh, and we'll sort everything out uh, anyway thanks for watching for this video and uh, she's looking great I can't wait to get some paint on it I've got to the stage now where every time I walk past it I need to glue something on now but thanks for your time thanks for watching uh, keep an eye out for the next video and uh, we'll uh, do lots more to it but thanks for watching and bye now